Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of the waveform on the Nexion display. The display I'm using is a 7 inch display. I'm only going to do this in simulation mode. I have a button, which I'm going to use to go between two pages. And then I have a number. I'm going to use a timer to count up in the number so we can draw a line on the waveform. I have the waveform itself. When you initially put it on here, it's 200 by 200. And then I have a timer down here. And in the timer, every time it executes, I have it set to a timing of, of 50 right now, 50 milliseconds. So it's going to go really fast. If I need to slow it down, I'll do that. But I think it should be fine because we have to count to 255. And every time we cycle through it, we're going to increment this number value by 1. And we're going to draw the line on the chart. The command that you use to draw one point on the chart is this add. And it's add, and then the first number here is the ID of the waveform. And if you look, click on the waveform, this is the ID. And then down here, you have channels. And you can have one, two, three, or four channels. And the second number here, so you have a one, which is the ID of it, then a comma, and then the channel. The thing that Nexion does, which is kind of confusing, is they they use zero base sometimes and not others. So when you only have one channel, the channel number is zero. If you have two channels, the number would be zero and one. We'll add a channel later and I'll show you that. And then we're going to write the value of n0 on the waveform. So you have three variables. You have the ID of the device, the channel, which can be up to four different channels, and then the value. I'm going to run it now just to show you how it works. It starts placing the number on the left edge, and then as this is increasing, the number is going up, and then it moves the number that it has placed before to the right. And it'll count up to 255, and then it'll drop back down. And then it'll start over again. And then when it gets to 255 again, it'll drop back down. It's an 8-bit counter, and 8 bits go 0 to 255. And so then when it rolls over to 0 again, it puts it down here. The values that go this way just drop off the chart. So when you add the value here, it increments and moves this way, and then once it's off the chart, it's gone. But if you make this chart longer, it will hold the data longer. I'm going to make the waveform 300 by 300 instead of 200 by 200 so you can see it hit the 250 and it'll look like the edge of a saw. And you do over here on the width and the height. I'm going to slow down the timer a little bit, go to 200. So I can talk about it a little bit more while it's functioning and it's not going quite as quickly. And then I can always do some, I can pause the video if need be or, or skip some area. I'm going to run debug again here. So now you can see that as this goes up, this is going up this way and it's moving this way. So you just, when you add a bit, you're adding one byte at a time and it's just placing it right here. And then the Nexion takes care of shifting all the data over. From what I understand and read, there's no way to draw a point out in the middle. You just add it and it slowly moves across. Now I'm gonna see if the editor can stop this when it hits 255 so we can see if it actually does drop at that exact moment. But now you can see the full waveform. And like I said, the maximum value is 255. So even if you made this 400, you can't make it go to 400. At 255, it's going to go back down to zero if you continue to count up. But you can change the scale of the display. I'm going to show you that next. If you go down to this DIS, and if you look down here, it's the scaling. So if we change this to 200, 
it'll be twice the scale. So every one that we add to the end value to make it go up, it's gonna go up two. And since this is 300 by 300, when it hits up right here, it should be at 150. And you can see that the line is a little more raised because for every one step to the right, it's going two steps up. If I can get the editor to pause it at 150 there, we should see if it's right at that point. Now if we let it go, you'll see just a line straight through when it hits to 255. I'm going to let it go and see if we can get that. And you can see the line now. And if you see this scale down here, we had, we had it at twice the scale, or 200%, if you think of it in percentage. It can go as high as 1,000. So you could really make that shoot up quickly, especially if you're dealing with a very low scale. If you're sending numbers from the Arduino, they could be in a 0 to 10 range, but yet you want to populate a 300, and you might do some scaling for something like that. Of course, you could also do it with math, but it just goes to show you there are some options there. I'm going to change this back to 100. Now we're going to add a channel to this. And if you add a second channel, well first I'm going to show you down here. This PCO, that's the color that we've been showing on the, the line. So when I add another channel, you'll see that it will add a PCO1. It's funny, these are also zero based. The PCO0 equates to channel 1, PCO1 equates to channel 2. So the color for that line is going to be yellow, but you could change the color here if you want. So now we have to add a line on the timer though, because if, if I were just to draw a line using the same value, it would just draw over it and you wouldn't be able to see anything. So we're going to add a different line here. So we do add, and we're still using the ID of 1. But we're using the second channel, which is 1. And then we're going to use n0.val. We're going to add 20 to it. Now, I found this strange. In some instances, you can't do math in the equation. But for this one, for some reason, they let you do that. I thought you'd have to add a variable. You'd have to store this in the variable, then add to the variable, and then use the value of the variable or the value. But in this case, it, it lets you add 20 to it. I doubt that you could add another variable or anything like that, but it does let you add 20. Just to recap, on channel on the second channel, we're going to have a yellow line. It should be a little bit above the other one because it's going to start where this one starts at 0, the initial one. The second one's going to start at 20. And you can see they slowly creep up. And this one's going to hit 255 before the pink one does, so it's going to drop sooner. Now as we approach 255, this one dropped probably at 245, and so hopefully the editor can pause it there and then pause it again at 255, but you can see that it works with that second channel. And you can have a third and fourth channel there too. Now if that looks a little bit funny the way that was going, you have some options in the direction too. This DIR here, we're going to go through each one of those. You have left to right, and now we'll try right to left. And this is the one that I think makes the most sense to me. Because as you add a value, it works from the left side, and then it draws it over to the right side. And then as we approach 235, that one drops, and then at 255, this one drops. So it works the same, it's just drawing it a different direction. And now there's a third direction we'll check also. It's a little bit deceiving though, right to left, because it actually starts on the left and goes to the right. Now write a line, so on this one, it's like the mirrored option of the other one. It puts the decimal, it puts the point that you're writing to it right on this line, right over here, and then it moves the data points to the left. So the first one we showed put the points over here, and move the old data to the left, to the right. 
This one puts the points on the right and moves the old data to the left. The middle one places the new point out here and leaves the initial points over here. I think I'm going to draw that one again because what you'll see is, is once it hits this side, then it begins to move the old data off the screen. So in this one you see the old data moving, but in that middle one you see the new data moving. So we'll go back to that one more time. And we're going to speed up the timing on it too. And you'll see once this gets over to this side, it'll just start moving this direction. It'll move from right to left. I think this is the most visually appealing of the modes that there are. But we're just going to leave it on that direction for now. If you read in the instruction set or whatever Nexion has, it makes it sound like if you switch pages and you come back, the waveform will completely start over. And the way it sits right now, that does happen. I'll show you with the way it's. That's why I put this button on here so we can go to page one and then back to page zero. So you can see we'll do it right when it gets up to this line. So we would expect that if it's running, it would be getting higher, but it starts over. And to me, that makes sense because you have the device set as a local. And most of the variables, like this number here, when you set them to be local storage and not global, they reset whenever you go to the page. But we're going to set this to global. So when I take this and I set it to global, like I said earlier, I had the impression that even when it was set to global that it would behave the same way it just did when it was local, but it doesn't. I'm going to do it again when it hits this line. So now, since it is global, is it going to keep going? It shouldn't though because the number field where we're getting the value from is going to be reset to zero. And you can see that it's at the exact same point when we flip the page, but it just starts up. But it did hold the data. And like I said, that isn't the way I read the instruction set. So I was kind of happy to see this. Now we're going to set this to global too. And we'll do it again on this third line. Now when we go back, I would expect the number value to hold, and it does, and it's like it just was paused, and then it starts going again. Now the timers on the Nexion, when I first started messing with the Nexion, I assumed that the timers would just run all the time, but they don't. They stop when you go to another page. And then I thought, well, maybe if I set it to global on the timer, that it would continue to run. Now, if it's running, expect it to be maybe up to here, but it's not. So the timers pause even when they're global. But what you probably could do is you could set a timer up on page two, maybe that refers back to it. We're going to get into some ways to simulate that it's continuing to run even when you're not on the other page. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.